Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guy and this is episode number 5 of the Visual Scripting Runner series and in this one uh, we are going to well do a bunch of stuff but first of all we need to fix a bug. So uh, I think that you might have actually noticed the bug before yourself but uh, if you are following along with this tutorial but in case you haven't this is what, it uh, this is what happens basically. So you can see that currently my score is 0 and we implement it remember using the time variable. Now if, I, if the game is over and I hit play again the store uh, score does not reset to zero. Instead, it continues at the actual time since the game started, which is obviously wrong. We do not want that. So we need uh, a, a. It might it will also count the time spent on the menu and stuff, which will, is totally wrong. We need to fix this. Now, in order to fix this, it's uh, really simple. Uh, what we can do is uh, select our player, uh, or, or just open up our player graph. You know, all right. And in here, what I'm going to do is you can see that we have got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, we are doing uh, um, well. Where are we actually doing it? All right. We are saying this uh, text here. We are multiplying it with time get time. Instead of doing this, we are going to have in a graph variable here called time. All right. And then this is going to be a float uh, with default value of zero. And we will just drag this variable here to get time directly. By the way, if you drag while you are hitting shift, you can check if the time uh, is defined. And, and if you uh, drag with control uh, with alt is then you can set the time so that's a really easy way instead of you know typing and selecting that all right so once you go ahead and say get time you, know, you can see that we are basically going to multiply this by this time and once we do that uh, after we have done this uh, I guess after uh, we might want to you know we might want to change this way subgraph I guess uh, if you want to but we're not gonna do that yet uh, so I'm just going to select all of this and then just move it to the left a little bit and then go ahead and uh, drag this uh, with alt to set it and we are setting this variable time to be mm, we are going to get time uh, and then we are going to say uh, add and just go add and then you can see that we can give it uh, as much inputs as we want and the second one is going to be our delta time. So we are going to add the time since the previous frame to this variable, every frame which should basically work, I guess. So uh, this should actually cause everything to function nicely and what we can do is that once the game is over, we can say set time uh, or just drag it with alt, I guess, uh, to this and you can just do it that and, uh, and you can say load literal here of zero. Alright, so now when I go under game and I hit play, well you should see that that bug disappears. So let's see. And so uh, the player is, uh, it, it, take, it takes a little bit of time to load. I have noticed extra if you are using visual scripting. Uh, the game will be slower of course than uh, without using visual scripting, but it should basically work. Because you know, it will by, kind of be like running a Python program. It will be kind of interpreted. Now if I it is 8 and if I hit play again, it starts from well, 0. Which is already really nice. So uh, we have got a pretty much complete implementation of uh, mm, well uh, everything. So we have got a, a nice uh, obstacle system right now and a uh, score counter. But these obstacles are currently just appearing at non-random intervals. So we need to make them you know appear. Some some will be more uh, more spaced than the others. So if the game is a little bit more challenging, and then we will add some final touches. So yeah, we have got one bug fixed now. Now, in order to actually add a little bit of randomness, let's let's just basically do that. It's not going to be that difficult. Just open up the script graph here, a graph here, and you can see there are a bunch of stuff here with a lot of things you've got. Uh, you might want to organize these into subgraphs as much as you can because that's going to really help. Uh, you know, like a subgraph of movement out of here, jumping, and then you can add in of score. Uh, you want to, or you should organize your code. Not gonna do that right now. Myself, I'm not gonna do that. So um, with this uh, everything done, we have got a nice uh, spawning obstacle system. So I'm going to open that graph, and you can see that here we just che uh, check if uh, our mm, this is greater than or equal, and then we spawn at this uh, at the position of this. Now instead of just spawning it at uh, a particular position, let's just modify that position a little bit. Now, uh, well, no, we don't need to modify that position a little bit. Instead, we can use this. Uh, if I go under here, you can see that we use uh, get object variable spawn time here and if i just right click and go all right let's just run that we have got a spawn time variable here 
Now, uh, by the way, you might want to access object variables from here. So to do that, you might need to select your player so that you can actually see them. So we have got op our object variables here now. And what we want, what I actually want to do is, um, oh, where is the spawning? Uh, subgraph is grounded, and we have got a subgraph for spawning as well. All right, in here, what we actually need to do is basically make the spawn time variable a little bit higher or lower. So in order to do that, if I just take this, uh, uh, well, this is an object variable, and if I go under here and I add in a, uh, uh, add in a graph variable here called spawn, uh, spawn time, come on, spawn time, and then I add that and then I make it a float and uh, then what I do is that instead of using this object variable I use this graph variable spawn time and upon doing that we get well we get the spawn time variable all night but what will happen is that um, uh, this um, we will be able to now uh, adjust the spawn time based on the original object spawn time variable so um, uh, whenever we actually do this so uh, when this greater or equal thing executes uh, it's uh, you can see true is going here. So what we need to do is uh, before we do any of this, so uh, let me just select all of that and then just move it here. Mm, and then what we are going to do here is we are going to go ahead and say set uh, one, or you can just you know drag this variable in here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Alt and you can plug this in the true. And what we need to do, what we need to set this to is basically uh, we need to have in an object variable called randomization. Randomization. Uh, it's, uh, but it's going to be something like a float and have a value of something like 0 0.3 by 4. And in here, what we will do is that we will set our spawn time to of oh, graph variable uh, to uh, well we will go ahead in our we will get the object variable of spawn time. So as you can see, we are using this. This, if I just get this here, this is a graph variable. I need the object variable, which is remember different than the graph variable. And uh, if you need to set this to a, if I go here and say random range, you can see that we get this uh, random range function with a float, uh, which are both inclusive. And we are going to execute this function in here. And we are going to take the result of this and then. We are going to plug that in the actual variable and for the mean inclusive it's going to be spawn time minus uh, or just say subtract uh, all right and from uh, and what we are going to actually subtract here is well, we can just plug this in the mean inclusive and i'm going to uh, duplicate this and uh, drag this here and i'm going to right click on this node and i'm going to hit replace and we are going to replace this with as all right uh, okay, it's not gonna work that well. I guess so. Just go ahead and say add. Uh, that should work, and you can drag this in the next inclusive. And for these values, what we are going to do is we are going to go under our object variable, uh, object variables, and we are going to uh, actually get our randomization. And with the with this randomization uh, with us, we can just plug this one in here and here. Now this should uh, not actually work uh, because we also need to set this variable on when the game starts. So for this purpose, uh, well, you can do something, whatever you like, but uh, you, what you might want to do is that you might want to change this variable a little bit. It's, it's going to be a little bit complicated, actually. But if I go under, uh, because this doesn't have a start method here, but you might want to, uh, but you, what we can do is we can go under our graph inspector here and add in another trigger input here called init. All right, and um, uh, what we can do here is that this initialization function. Mm, so this basically like when we are setting this, so we are going to basically go ahead and so get, uh, say um, go under our object and drag this one, uh, drag go under our object graph and set this spawn variable to our object spawn time variable. So if I find the spawn time, actual spawn time can't seem to find it. All right, here, and we are going to get the spawn time and we are going to set it to this. And this is only going to happen on the initialization uh, of this. So now what I do is that if I go under my player and I add in a on start method. All right. What I can do is that we can call the init one in this of this graph uh, using this. So this is the beauty of subgraphs. You can add as many functionalities as you want. So if I go under here now and I hit play, this should uh, not work perfectly, but let's just see what, is, what we have got right now. So let's see. 
uh, it's taking a little bit of time to reload the assembly because if you remember mm, uh, alright so you can see that it is first of all appears normal and you can see that uh, I don't know if it's really noticeable to you but uh, maybe it is doing some uh, something here uh, you know adding different kind of obstacles uh, there is a little bit of randomness I think so in order to check that let's just increase our randomization amount so just select the player uh, and go under here and increase the randomization to something like one and let's try to hit play and see what it goes like <laughs> it's going to be a whole lot uh, uh, of randomization but just let's let just see if it actually works so yeah uh, you can see that it's uh, uh, not it's doing randomization and that's very visible right now uh, sometimes it's lower sometimes it's higher so yeah this is basically working and now we have got a obstacle spawning system working as well so what I'm going to do is actually select the player and make it 0.5 because that's a bit too much. So I think the final uh, thing to implement in our game is uh, sound uh, when the player jumps maybe. Uh, but I think we are not going to implement that right now because uh, you know we have got pretty much complete game and you can watch my other tutorials if you do want to implement sound. For now I think this is pretty much it for this game and this series. So um, well, uh, this is our final episode and uh, now in the next episode, uh, in the next series when we start, I am thinking about uh, starting a series on Unreal Engine. So if you want to see an Unreal Engine tutorial, then let me know in the comments or if you have some other ideas, just let me know down in the comment section. Uh, also, uh, go ahead and uh, check out my devlog channel. Uh, it's really cool. You should definitely check it out. And also like and subscribe and uh, I will see you in the next series. Bye.